welcome to the Leveling Leaders module. You're about to learn the smart method of taking running records on children in order to arrive at data-driven instructional planning. We have a couple of great children that we're going to bring out and I'm really excited to work with you on this. But before that, let's talk about getting our materials ready. The first thing we're going to do is make up an assessment kit and reading A to Z has made that very easy for you. So let's go over to the website now. You're going to log in as a member and you'll click on the assessment tab and you'll notice there's a wide variety of different types of assessments that A to Z offers and you can look at those another day but for now we want to zero in on assessing with benchmark books. And as you do you'll find that there's a section that describes how to take a running record. You want to click on benchmark books and you'll find that every single level from A through Z has a fiction and a non-fiction benchmark book that you can use for your assessment kit. So you want to download every single book. Even if you're only teaching one grade, it's good to have a complete assessment kit. So do every level. And you want your running record, your actual book, which I'll show you in a little while, all made up, and your comprehension quick check for every level. Get all of that made up and you can put that in your kit. You're going to run these off and staple them together. And at first that was the trickiest part for me, but the website does walk you through exactly how to do this. And there are two kinds of books, the horizontal book and the vertical book. So you will make the books for every level from A through Z, the benchmark books, your fiction and your nonfiction and you will now be ready to have your very own assessment kit. And this is just invaluable. I mean, it would be very expensive for you to go out and purchase an assessment kit, and here with A to Z, you can just make up your kit and it will be totally good to go. Now what I did was go out to Office Max or any office store and get two plastic bins that you see here. And inside those bins, I put a hanging folder and in each hanging folder, I put two manila folders, one for the fiction and one for the nonfiction. Then I ran off my benchmark uh, running records and my comprehension quick checks and put that in the file. Now I generally make up about 10 copies of the benchmark quick checks and the running records so that my assessment kit is always good to go. I don't want to run out when I have children there and if I find out that I'm down to one or two I always make more. Now we're almost ready to bring out the children but there is something else I do when I get my assessment kit ready and I'm going to show you again how to do that. We'll go over to the website but I put a hanging folder in the front of my kit and in there I put the correlation chart which I'll show you how to use and I put the general tips on how to take the running records. The correlation chart is really invaluable. You can just go over to the website and you'll see there you can click on correlations and then click on correlation chart. You'll find it right there and you'll notice that the correlation chart makes a comparison between reading A to Z and a number of different leveling systems and you also have the grade level of the child there which you will need to refer to when you take the record. I also click on assessment again and I go to assessing with benchmark books and remember all those documents there, I make a copy of everything you see here so that I have everything in that front folder that says general information so that when I test the child, I'm good to go. We'll talk a little later about how to use the correlation chart and how to take the running records, but for now, I would just like you to get your assessment kit finished so we can bring on the children. The only other things you're going to need will be a pencil, a pen, and a calculator. To start the process, you're going to have to take a guess as to what instructional level the child might be at. If you know the child, you may know she's a little above grade level, a little below, and you might have an idea where to start. If you've never met the child, ask last year's teacher, look over any records you have, and if you really don't know, then you start right at about the child's grade level. Remember, the point of this process is to kind of calibrate, to get to the point where you determine where the child can read at 90 to 94 percent accuracy. Anything above that is the child's independent level and they really won't need your help. 
Anything below that is the child's frustration level, and we certainly don't want anybody reading there. So we're trying to find their instructional level 90 to 94 percent. So take out your correlation chart, choose a level to begin testing, take a deep breath, and call a child over to your table. Step one, set the stage. It's important to create an environment where children feel comfortable, safe, and eager to do their best. I'm going to show you two children, and I'd like you to think about how my own approach differs as I set the stage for each child. Be marking say right. So you don't have to worry if you see me marking. That's because I'm marking down all the words you're reading correctly. Is that okay with you? That gonna work? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is mark your name down. Okay, I'm writing your name. And now I'm gonna write today's date. Do you know what today's date is? Do you know what month it is? No? Okay, I think we're in February already. Imagine that. And I think we're probably around February 4. I'm gonna take a guess here. And I'm gonna put my name down. And then I'm gonna have you read this and I'm just gonna check when you say the words correctly. Is that gonna work? Okay. All right, now. Okay, well, just one second. I want to get your name down, okay? okay. Amanda, you want to spell it for me? A. Mm -hmm. M. A. N. D. A. Okay. How do you know how to spell D? Ama oh, how do I know how to spell D? How what do you, you mean? D's a letter. How do you know how to spell my name? Oh, your name? I just figured it out. Imagine that. Okay. No, you write a D before I said it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> we didn't even go to my birthday party. I'm sorry. Okay, wait a minute. Now, well, let's take a look at the cover. Do you know what this says? The wheel. Okay, what do you think's happening here? The guys are driving wheels. And look at the fat wheel. Oh, that looks a little fatter, doesn't it? Do you think it's because it's just in the front of the picture? Maybe? Yeah. What do you think's going to happen in the story? Maybe they're going to drive around on tires. Maybe. Is a tire another name for a wheel? A tire yeah. and wheel is the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to write down. Every time you say a word correctly, I'm going to write it down. How, is that okay? Okay. All right. Let's try it. Did you notice a difference between these two children? Our first little girl was a deer in the forest. I didn't want to crush her spirit or scare her away, so I began by speaking very softly and keeping things very light and quiet. And you're going to notice later how she ultimately opens up and becomes quite chatty. You'll be surprised, but at first we had to keep things very quiet. She's very cautious. Now our second little girl is a whole different story, isn't she? We have our lovable puppy here. So we have to keep the energy high, work with her energy, keep things upbeat, positive, and keep the pace going. Keep our eyes on her at all times. So the first thing you want to do is establish the rapport. Work off the child. Two more things. Did you notice that I told the child I would be marking on my paper every time she read something right? You want to do this because you don't want this child to feel like, oh no, what is she writing? And then if they feel like that, they're going to not give their best. So you want them to feel positive. You want this to be a good experience for the child. And did you notice, second of all, I looked at the cover of the book with the child and began activating the background knowledge. And that's certainly appropriate. You want to get some dialogue going about the book before you begin. Let's take a look now at how our first little girl is beginning to warm up. Let's just take a look at the cover first. What do you see in the picture here? Policeman. Yeah, that does look like a policeman. How did you know that was a policeman? Yeah, the policeman had in a whistle. Oh, you know, I didn't even notice that. He does. That was a small little tiny thing and you saw that. I wonder what's going to happen. Do you have any ideas? No? What's he doing? He's holding up his hand. Yeah. I wonder why. To make the car stop. Yeah, sounds like it. Sounds like it. Let's see if we can find out. We're going to turn the page here. Oh my goodness, what's happening here? Is Hyatt falling? It looks like it, doesn't it? Yes, it looks like it's getting away from somebody. Oh, my. All right, let's see how you do here. Okay, so you've set the stage, and the child is ready to read. Step two, make the marks. 
The Reading A to Z website provides a very nice guide for you as you learn to take a running record. Let's log into the website now and find our instructions. We're back in our assessment section, Assessing with Benchmark Books, and we've clicked on Taking a Running Record, and you'll notice all the information you need here, from how often to test different types of readers, to the markings, exactly what they mean, how to do the markings, and if they're worth an error point, and that's pretty important. The website will make it very clear. For example, if a child repeats a word or a phrase, you'll mark an R, but that will not be worth an error point. And you see the filled out running record here, so you can actually study the pages, look at the sample, see if it makes sense to you, and you'll have all the information. How long you wait, for example, if a child doesn't get a word. So take some time and really study those pages before you begin your assessment. You'll notice that you're marking an SC every time a child reads something incorrectly, then realizes it doesn't sound right or it doesn't make sense, and stops and uses a fix-up strategy. This is very important because we're wanting to find out if the child is realizing that reading is a meaning-making activity. And part of what we do when we teach reading is teach these strategies so that the children know to go back. So we want to mark down the SC. All right, let's see how our two little girls are doing with their reading. Did I choose a book that's too hard or too easy? Did I pinpoint the instructional level? Let's find out. Step two, make the marks. Wheel. Wheel comes off the truck. Okay, turn the page. It rolls down the hill. Four. Faster. Faster and faster. The wheel rolls through. Through the. Field. Field. It was. Keep trying. I think you got it. Very pass. Good. good for you. The cows. Faster and faster. Mm -hmm. The wheel was. Okay, let's see, you all stopped here. Do you have any idea on this? Through? Through the barn. Good. The wheel, I mean. Try that again. It was past the chickens. Faster and faster. The wheel was. Toward. Toward the river. It was over the. You're trying that one? Bridge. Bridge faster and faster. The wheel was In. into the school. It was out of the door. Faster and faster. The wheel was through through the town. Town. It was past the policeman. Faster and faster. The wheel was through through town and t into the. Garage. Garage. The man 
puts. Puts. It's back on the truck. Very good. Very good. All right. Now look at all these check marks. Do you know what these are? How did I tell you they were going to be? I doing how good I was doing. Yes, look how good you were doing. Oh my goodness, look at all the checks. You did wonderful. Now I'm just going to take a little look at this and then I'm going to give you another one. Let's see now. I'm just going to mark a few things here. I'm going to add something up. Why don't you tell me a little bit, did you find that same picture? See if you can find where you see the picture again in the book somewhere. Would you do that? <gasps> the same picture. Did you guess right what was going to happen? Yes. You did? So what happened? The wheel was rolling past the policeman. Yes, that's right. How, how did the wheel fall off? He was going too fast. Oh, you think he was going too fast. Uh, yeah, I mean, that could be. But usually when you go fast, I don't know if that makes the wheel fall off, but something happened that it fell when, off. Once it happened to my friend. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. What happened? She was going too fast, and then the wheel came off. Oh, my. Off of her car or her bike or what? Car. Oh, no, that sounds very frightening. Was your friend okay? Oh, I'm so glad. Wow, that sounds scary. Okay, I'm going to give you another book. Allie warmed up nicely at the end, didn't she? Here she started with no verbal communication, barely a nod of the head, and now she's telling me a little story about her friend. It's really a lot of fun to see a child warm up. But how does she do academically? What's happening with her instructionally? Okay, we can look over at our A to Z running record sheet, tally up her errors. Allie had 13 errors here. Total of 99 words you'll see at the top of the page here. We subtract our 13 from the 99. We get 86. Divide the 86 by the total of 99 words and we get .8686. We're going to average that up to 87% accuracy. So actually, Allie is reading here on her frustration level. Interesting that she's warming up, but she's actually reading on her frustration level. So I know that I have to try a little easier text. Important point, if you get nothing else out of these modules, get this. As a teacher, you have to know more than you tell. I know that Allie is having a tough time reading. I don't want to communicate that message to her. My goal is that this little sweetheart will feel like a success. So I don't want to blame her, blame her parents, blame last year's teacher. I know that she needs a little help in reading. That's what I need to know. I want to convey to her that she's doing well and just be as encouraging as I can. As a teacher, you have to know more than you tell. So I'll select an easier text. In the meantime, let's check in with Mandy and see how things are going with her. And you just start reading and I'm just going to mark every time you say the okay. words correctly, okay? The wheel comes off the truck. Okay, keep going. It rolls down the hill. Good. What does that say? What do you think? I'm faster. Faster. This one. Yep, faster. Faster and faster. The wheel rolls through the fence. It rolls past the cows. Faster and faster. The wheel rolls through the barn. It rolls past the chickens. Faster and faster. The wheel rolls towards the river. It rolls over the bridge. Faster and faster. The wheel rolls into the school. It rolls out the door. Faster and faster. The wheel rolls through the town. It rolls past, past the policeman. Faster and faster. The wheel rolls through town and into the garage. The man puts it on the
was a lot more comfortable, wasn't she? When we tally up her errors, we find that she only made four errors. Now, did you get towards? That was a tricky one. You may have missed that. The word was toward, and Mandy said towards. So we do count that. Now, we don't count the repeat. Remember, you mark R for repeat, but it doesn't count as an error point. You'll notice that she repeated the word past as she was figuring out the reading, but we're not going to count that as an error point. Now, once we do determine that a child is able to decode accurately, then we pull out our comprehension quick check. There's no point in pulling it out if they weren't able to decode it on their instructional level. But we want to at least see how she's doing with her comprehension now that we know that she can decode. So let's see if our happy little first grader understands what she's reading. Just look in there and show me what your favorite page was. I, my favorite page was when, when the man, when the man looked at the tire. Oh, look at that. That was funny, wasn't it? He's thinking, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to give you another one. I think you really liked it, but let me just ask you a few questions, okay? Yeah. Why do you think the wheel came off the truck? It's because maybe he was driving and maybe when he was driving, maybe it just popped off. Oh, maybe. Could be. Could be. What two animals did the wheel roll past in the story? It rolled through. Oh, let's see if you can remember without even looking at it. See if it you can remember. It rolled through the cow. Yes. And the chicken. You got it. That's good. And uh, that's it. That's enough. What three buildings did the wheel roll into? Do you remember? Um, the garage. Yeah. And the school. Yes. You remember another building? Nope. No? Okay, let's go on. Who put the wheel back on the truck? The, the people that fixed it. Okay. And what was your favorite part of the story and why? When the man thought, what's going on with the wheel? <laughs> okay. That man in the boat, huh? You really like that one. All right. I think you like that one so much we're going to go on to another story. She seems to be grasping everything, doesn't she? Okay. So with Allie, we're going to go down a level, and with Mandy, we're going to go up a level. Let's check in with Allie to see what the climate is like. Okay, let's take a look. We'll try it again. Now, what do you see on the cover of this one, Alexis? What's this? Water coaster. Oh, have you ever been on one? I've been on the sky ride. Oh, yeah, there's a sky. Look at you noticed that, didn't you? That was so tiny, I hardly saw my, it. My sister's been on that one. Oh, how does she like it? I don't know. I don't know either, but I, you know what? You know a little secret? I'm too scared to go on those roller coasters. Once um, my mommy and my sissy um, rode a roller coaster, and um, the roller coaster seats were like, um, like a race car. Oh, my goodness. And they were round. Oh, that sounds a little scary to me. I, you know the only kind I like to go on? The water rides. If, it's a, if you end up a little wet, then I don't feel scared. I don't know why. I've been on it before. Yeah, like the log flume. You go in a, in a log and you come down. Yeah. Yeah, do you know what this says on the cover here? No. No, you don't know any of these words? Let's take a go. How about this one? I bet you know this one. How? You are right. How? Very good. What about this? Do you know anything about, do you know what? Th things. Gonna, yes, how things. Move. How things move. You did know it. Good for you. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a check every time you get the correct word. So let's see how things move. So I think, is it, do you think it's only going to be about roller coasters? Different things maybe? Okay, let's take a look here and I'm going to mark it down when you do it correct again. So go ahead. Now remember, technically, Allie didn't do that well in her first reading. I know that and you know that, but she doesn't know that and she doesn't need to know that. She's feeling a lot more comfortable talking with me now and beginning to open up and I'm getting to know her a lot better. You notice when I ask her to read the cover and she can't read it, because I know Allie now, I pause a little bit and give her a little more time because I'm now realizing she needs a little confidence and maybe she can do it. So I'm learning a lot about Allie. Let's see how she does in this second book. Things move in many ways. Oh, wow, you did a great job there. The top 
goes. Good. Good. No, I'm saying you're doing good. <laughs> the top goes. You're right. You're doing a good job. Goes. The top goes. Go ahead. Around mm -hmm. and around. Mm -hmm. The yo-yo goes down and up. Mm -hmm. The people go in and out. Nice. The car goes over. Very nice. The train goes under. Yes, you are right. How do things How do these these things move? You did wonderful. I think you might have missed one page somehow. I did you get this one? I didn't hear you with these. Did you get this page right here? Let's try that again. The swing goes back and forth. Look at this. Look at this. You did wonderful. Very nice. I really enjoyed listening to you read, Alexis. You did a wonderful job. Okay? You're all set today. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, Allie's reading fine here. She actually made one error. Now, I'm not going to count the fact that she turned two pages at once. I'm not going to count that as a try again. She wasn't confused. She just accidentally picked up two pages. So she missed the word these at the end, and that's it. So I'm going to start Allie now on a, a level C and work with her. But I'm very confident in, in looking at her and seeing her style, I'm very confident that with a week or two at the most of solid strategy instruction, Allie will be reading on a level D. And I'll teach you the strategy instruction in our next module. But for now, let's check back in with Mandy. Let's put her up a level. You, do, you have, do you know any babies? Yeah, my baby brother's named Donald, and my dad's named Donald, too. Oh, is that right? So you have a baby, so you know all about babies. What do you think about this baby? Is she having a good time? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Okay. You can see that Mandy is very comfortable, has some background knowledge, and is ready and raring to go. Bath time. Okay, bath time, bath time. All right, go ahead. Mom says it's bath, it is time for my bath. I get into the tub. I go splash, splash. My little rubber duck gets into the tub. It goes quack, quack. My little toy fish go gets into, into the tub. And it goes squish, 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 squish. What is it? It goes what? Swish, swish. Oh, okay. All right. My little Good. toy boat gets into the tub. It goes toot, toot. Good expression. The big soap bubbles go up and up. They go pop, pop. The soap slips out of my head. It goes loop. <laughs> okay, good. My mom says it is time to get out. I get out of the tub. Drip, drip. The water goes out of the tub. Griggle, griggle, grub, then. Very good, very good. Hey, okay. is there any more stories? What was that? Is there any more stories? There are many more stories. Oh. You're going to be surprised. Let oh, me good. just check something out here. Once again, Mandy does well here. She makes five errors, and she actually self-corrects five times, which is great. So we know we've got a good level on her here, and we'll look a little more closely at the nature of her errors later, but for now, let's see if she comprehends. Boy, you did a lot of things right, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. 
Ooh, I wish okay. I could do that. That's what my Okay, teacher. we're going to keep going, but I'm going to ask you some questions about it. But go ahead. You can keep talking to me. Okay. What Guess we, what? What? Miss Marshall said I can keep my census poster. Oh, good. Yeah, one she said I can keep it because I did good. Okay. I passed the books out. All right, name one girl in the story. I'm sorry. <laughs> name one toy the girl in the story played with in the tub. Um, can I do all of them? Sure. The duck and the boat and the... Good. You remembered a lot. And the fish. You got it. What other toy did she play with? Oh, well, you named them all. Okay. Do you think the girl... Oh, are you trying to look at the paper for the answers because you can read so well? Do you think the girl liked to take a bath and why? It's because she likes to splash in the water and play with her bath toys. Okay. Why did the girl get out of the tub? It's because she has to go nighty night. Ah. What special toys do you like to play with in the tub? I like to play with my daughter's stuff and I like to play with my brother's thing and my brother's um, Kirby's George Cream, and I like to make experiments. Oh, my goodness. You like to do a lot. Well, you know what? I'm going to give you a story that's going to be a little harder. Is that okay? Okay. Because you're doing so well. I can do hard. Really hard ones. All right, I may see a bump to one that's pretty hard. She's definitely connecting with the text, so we know we can move on. I'm going to take a chance here and skip a level. We're on a level E, but I think I'll try a level G. Big ants for cats. Oh my goodness. There are now. many ten kinds of cats. There are big cats and small cats. All cats have um stripe sharp sharp claws and sharp teeth. And all cats have fur. It looks like it might be getting a little harder here. And you'll notice that she substitutes the word striped for the word sharp. This makes me wonder if she might have a little trouble with words containing either an R control pattern or a blend with an R. Let's watch and see how she does. Cats like to eat meat. They use their sharp teeth to, and claws to get and eat food. Wow, very good. House cats are small. Cats with soft fur, they make good pets. They like to play with, with, what does that say? Cuddle. Cuddle. I, leopards, are big cats. They have spots on their fur. They are hard to see in trees and gr grass. Leopards sleep in, in trees and even dark. What does that say? You were doing it. You were doing it. Dark. Drag. Drag their food into trees. Crawlers. Cougars. And cougars and big and purple cats. They live in rocks and uh, caves. They eat di De dinner, deer, deer, and other animals. Yep. You're allowed to catch cow. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Huh. Okay. All right. Lions live where there are not many trees. They live. Tigers. They live. Live. Tiger with many other lions. Many lions living together are called a pearl. A pearl 
of lion sleep most of the days. Tigers are the biggest cats of all. They have orange fur with black stripes. They are not many tigers in the world. I hope they don't bite me. <laughs> cats are different in many ways, but cats are the same in many ways too. All cats like to play, but they like to sleep most of all. Oh good. Okay, now look in there and find your favorite page. My favorite page is the first my this the the fifth one. Oh, that is cute. Yes, that's very cute. All right, I just want to check one thing. See all the checks I made on here? Boy, you were really reading, weren't you? Yeah, I'm good at reading. You're very good at reading. Now I'm just going to count something up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All righty. I'm just going to do something here. Bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. Can I look at the camera? You can. Did you notice that my early hypothesis is bearing out? Mandy is having trouble with words with an R in them. But we'll look a little more closely at that later. For now, Let's see how we're doing with her instructional level. So again, we get out our running record sheet, take a look. She had 12 errors, total of 163 words. 163 minus 12 gives you 151. Divided by 163 is roughly 0.926. So she got about a 93% accuracy. So we're right on the money here with her instructional level. We were good to skip up to a level G. But let's see how she's doing with her comprehension. All right. Okay. Let's see here. All right. You ready? Yeah. Name two ways that all cats are alike. Uh, like tigers and lions. How are they alike? What is the same about them? Different kinds of cats. Well, one has stripes and one has a mane. Okay, that's how they're different. But can you tell me how they're the same? Well, cats and lions and leopards and all those have whiskers. Oh, they all have whiskers. Okay. Anything else that they're all and the they same? And they all have tongue and okay. all have fur and teeth. Very nice. Okay. Very Why nice. do you think some people like cats? Because sometimes cats are very nice. Oh, okay. Why is it hard to see the leopards in the trees in the grass? Is because they sleep during the day. Oh, okay, okay. And they like to eat in the trees, and the trees are so, like, have so much trees that they can't, they cannot, well, they, they, you cannot see them. Why can't you see them? Is because there's too many leaves in the trees, and sometimes they go where there's lots of leaves. I see. Okay, where do cougars live? I don't know. Okay, you don't know where the cougars live. And when do the lions usually sleep? They sleep, like, sometimes in the day. Okay. And sometimes in the night. Oh, okay. All right. Very good, Amanda. Well, I think that you did very well. I think we're done with you, okay? No. No, you just love to read so much. We'll get you some more special books, and we'll keep going, okay? I'll come back. No. Not right now, but I'll come back, okay? Okay. She's delightful, isn't she? Comprehension is breaking down a bit here because the decoding is becoming a bit harder. So we know that we have a level on her, and we know where to begin our instruction. Now our next step is where we will go a little more in depth. This is where you will learn to become a diagnostic reflective practitioner. Big words for saying that you're going to be far more than the average teacher when you get this next piece right. So stay tuned, stay focused. Step three, analyze the assessment. Let's take a look at Allie. First, let's analyze her general approach to the task. 
And you want to write all of this down because remember, you're going for data-driven instruction. You want to make notes which you will refer to as you help the child learn to read. The first thing I noticed is that Allie is shy, so I'm going to write that down, shy. I need to know that her confidence level needs to be built up and, and whoever works with her needs to know not to come on too strongly at first. Second, I want to make a note that she responds well to positive reinforcement. She does very well when she becomes validated, so I want to note that so I can remember to continue to really build her up. Third, she doesn't use any fix-up strategies. Wow, I better write that down. Her tendency is to ask the teacher when she doesn't know a word. Now, there are three meaning cues, and you'll find more about these on the Reading A to Z website, and we will talk more about them in our next module, but I know now that I'm going to have to teach Allie these meaning cues, these fix-up strategies. This is going to be very important so that she can work with her own reading and realize that she needs to stop herself and use some strategies in order to try to read a word. You didn't really notice her doing a lot of sounding out. Another thing is, did you notice that even when Allie was told a word, she did not always get it the second time around? So I need to write down that she needs a lot of reteaching and repeated practice. Finally, what about her fluency? I did feel that she had some control of the text. She did stop at periods, so I'll make a note of that. Now let's look more carefully at her actual miscues. And what I like to do is literally write every missed word down on a piece of paper and begin to analyze the types of words that the child missed. Are they sight words or are they sound words? Wheel, faster, through, 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 toward, field, bridge, town, garage, puts. You'll notice that I wrote the word through three times. Every time she missed the word through, it did count as an error point. Once we give them a word, we do count it as an error point if they miss it the next time. The only exception to that is if there is a name. And if you give them a name and they miss the name again, you don't count the name more than once. But with any other word, you do. Now I'm going to take a look at these words and categorize the kinds of words they are by sight word or sound word. Now as I look at this list, there are three sight words in the list, puts, through, and toward. I'm going to make a special note of this and I'm going to use particular strategies that I use to teach sight words. These are very different than the strategies I use to teach sound words and you will learn these in the next module. But for now, we know she has three sight words to work on. All right, let's take a look at our sound words in our list. What is she missing for sound words? Well, I'm going to pull out for now faster and town. I want to take a look at these words because these look like words that as a first grader she should probably be able to have some skills to work on. And you notice that both of these words has a blend in it. Faster, we're looking at the ST, and town, the WN. Now it's interesting to me that when I gave her time, she was able to figure out the word past. Let's take a look at the tape and watch her figuring out the word past. It was. Keep trying, I think you got it. We hear you. Past. Good for you. The cows. That tells me that this is a teachable edge for Allie. It's interesting that when she had the word past, she was able to sound it out, but when she had the word faster, she was stumped. Now it may be that the suffix er confused her a little bit, or it may be that she has a harder time with the consonant sound f rather than p. I don't know, but I want to make a note now that I want to work with Allie with blends that appear at the end of a word, and I'll also have to see how she does with blends at the beginning of a word. And I want to work with her with words that have four letters, like town, fast, past. So I'm going to make a note of that. And now let me take a look at some of the other words on her list. Wheel, field, bridge, and garage. Now while these words may not be words that I would expect Allie to decode easily as a first grader, 
I might be able to expect her to at least get the initial sound or to use some other strategy to try to figure these words out. I might expect her to say, well, what would make sense here and take a little, a little risk. I might expect her to say, what would sound right in the sentence? And she doesn't use any of these strategies. So I'm going to make a note that I need to teach Allie these other kinds of strategies to figure out words. So it seems like I have a good lesson plan for her shaping up in my head. Now in the meantime, I want to take a running record and finish filling some of these other things out. You notice at the bottom we have the error rate. We want to know about how many words she misses as compared to how many words she's able to read. We'll take the total at the top, 99, divide it by her errors, 13, and we'll come up with about 8. That's a 1 to 8 ratio. So for every 8 words she reads, she misses one. And you can see why she's a little frustrated. Next, we want to look at our self-correction rate. And the goal here is 1 to 4 or less. We're hoping that when children read, at least four times when they're making an error, they're going to stop and say, let me try to fix that up. And Allie hasn't done any of that at all, so we really can't even do a calculation here. Now this is a goal, so we know we really have to teach her these fix-up strategies. We have a good baseline on her, don't we? We know what she needs, we know what we need to teach her. So in the meantime, let's take a look at Mandy and see how she's doing. We'll probably be able to do a little better analysis because Mandy is taking more risks here, so we have a little more to work with. She's doing a little more attempting to self-correct and figure out the passage on her own. Now, in the wheel, you'll notice that she only misses four, but as you take a look at it, it's interesting. She misses the word field, and she says fence. That tells me something. She's using two of her cueing systems. She realizes the initial consonant sound, and she also puts in something that would make sense there. So I see that she's using two of these cueing systems. Now, a little later in the passage, she omits part of a sentence. Let's take a look at that. The wheel rolls through town and into the garage. The man puts it on the truck. Very good, very good. What else is there? The sentence still flows, even when Mandy leaves a part out, so nothing signals her that something sounds wrong. If it did, then she would be using a structural or a syntax cue. But as it is, even with the missing part, it flows, so she goes on. Let's take a look now at big and small cats. Big and small cats. Oh my goodness. There are now. many ten kind of cats. Notice that when Mandy reads the word kinds, she originally says kins. She's trying to use her phonetic skills to sound it out, and she does a good job, doesn't she? But then she realizes that that doesn't make sense, so she pulls in a meaning cue. She thinks, kins? That doesn't make sense. Oh, kinds. And that's what good readers do. Let's just pause a minute to review our three cueing systems that we want to teach children based on what good readers do. The easiest way that I can think of to remember these is to think of the three cueing systems in terms of pieces from small to large. When we read, the smallest piece is the individual sound in a word which is represented by a letter or sometimes more than one letter. For example, ch is a sound or a phoneme represented by two letters. When good readers read, they put together the sounds and they associate the symbols and the sounds and they decode. When you're marking a running record, you mark that with a V for visual. They're using a visual cue. They're looking with their eyes at the letters, called the graphemes, in order to get the sound called the phonemes. So it's a visual phonetic method. And that's exactly what Mandy did when she sounded out kinds as kins. But good readers don't stop there. So if you think in terms of pieces, what's the next largest piece is the word. Good readers also use a word cue, meaning cue. They think, wait a minute, that word doesn't make sense. I just put all those sounds together, but it doesn't make sense to me. When they use those kinds of cues, we say that a reader is using a meaning cue, and we code it with an M. What's the next largest thing in a piece of text? And that's the actual sentence level. 
When a good reader is reading something, and they might use a visual cue, they might use a meaning cue, and they realize that something doesn't sound right within the context of the sentence, then we say that they are using a structural cue, or I like to think about it as a syntax cue, and we code that with an S. The reason that that works is that children speak generally in a way that makes sense, and that's grammatically correct, even though they don't know the rules of grammar. So if they are reading and something doesn't sound right, they're actually looking at the sentence level of it in an intuitive sense. They may not realize that's what they're doing, and they're able to figure out naturally what would fit there. Those are the three cueing systems that you'll see in our next module that we will be working to teach children. V, the smallest piece, the individual sound represented by the letter. M, the next largest piece, the actual word, what word would fit here, and S, the even larger piece, the entire sentence, what makes sense with the other words and flows here. But I like to go even deeper than that. I like to really look at the actual words missed and do a little deeper analysis like I did with Allie. So let's go now and look at the actual words that Mandy missed and get a little more serious here about patterns. And again, I always divide this into two categories, sight words and sound words. Let's take a look now at Mandy's list of missed words. For sharp, she says striped. She asks us for the word cuddle. For drag, she says dark. For cougars, she tries crawlers. For powerful, she comes up with purple. For deer, she says dinner. For together, she says tigers. For pride, she says purred. And for there, she says they. Did you notice any sight words that we can teach our first grader? I would certainly pull out there, they, making that distinction, and I would pull out together. And I would work with her on those sight words. But what about our other words? Did you notice any patterns of letters that keep showing up? Something we might want to work with her on. I think my earlier hypothesis did bear out. I would work with her on her words containing a letter R. Now notice there's a difference between an R control syllable and a syllable containing an R blend. And we'll talk about that next time. But I would certainly target the words containing an R with the blend versus the R control. So we're coming up with a pretty good instructional plan for Mandy. We know what she needs now. We're ready for the next letter in our smart method of leveling readers, record results. Now that we've made some notes on our students, the next step is to record the results. If you're anything like me, you may have pieces of paper around the classroom and there's so much going on with the children, it's hard to keep everything in one place. To make this easier, I've designed some special folders that I use when I take running records with reading A to Z. On the front of the folder, I mark it down every time I do a running record. You can see on one side we have the running records and on the other side the comprehension quick checks. So I track it there. And then I put the running record inside the folder. The bottom inside of the folder, I take some anecdotal notes and records and put them there, the things we've been talking about. And on the back, I put my formal scores. That way, I have a great tool that I can use for parent-teacher conferences and for my instructional planning. So it's just a way to organize it. The last letter for our smart method of leveling readers is the T, tabulate the tests. What I like to do at the beginning of the year when I work with all of my class doing the running records is to list their names down in vertical fashion down a piece of paper and think about my groupings for instructional teaching. Here's a sample list. You can see here level C, Sandy, Holly, Mark, and Allie. Level D, Mallory. Level E, Avery and Cooper. Level F, Debbie, Rebecca, Eric, Jeff, Gloria, and Jim. Level G, Dale, Lauren, Chris, and Mandy. Level H, Karen and Laurel. And level M, Kevin. Now these groupings will change throughout the year as you test every two weeks for your low achievers and maybe every eight weeks for your high achiever. 
But to make your, your original groupings, you need to really look at this list and study it because it doesn't work out simply with four, 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 and four. You wish it would. So you have to think, what am I going to do with Mallory? Well, I could put her with Sandy, Holly, Mark, and Allie, but I'm not sure. Uh, knowing Mallory, I think she'd do better with Avery and Cooper. So you have to make those kinds of judgment calls as you try to make groups on their instructional level. Now there's one thing I do that's maybe a little different. Take a look at Kevin. He's way outside of the pale here, I guess you could say. He's far above the other students. Now should I put him down in the next group down when there's such a gap? What I might do is put Kevin with my group of low achievers, but he would be in his own text in reading A to Z. Then when I call everyone to my table, I can get Kevin started and know he's fine, and then intensify my instruction for my low group. That's just an option for you as you do your instructional grouping. That's it for the Leveling Readers module. Remember to use the SMART method and you will never go wrong. Set the stage, make the marks, analyze the assessment, record the results, and tabulate the tests. See you a little later to talk about your guided reading groups and what to do with the rest of the students while you're at your guided reading table.